Hello, and welcome to the first event of the New York Flute Club's new season. I am Jane Rosenfeld, current president of the club. We're still on virtual internet connection, but expecting, fingers crossed, to meet in person in 2022. Today, we will see and listen to an extraordinary French flutist, Maxence Larieux. I hope you will feel the communication and beauty he brings to the music, even remotely, and will enjoy the interviews and insights compiled by Robert Langevin, principal flutist of the New York Philharmonic, and Fred Marcuse, our board member and the crucial link to Larieux and the French School. Our season will continue this coming Thursday, the 21st, with an interactive I Just Wanna Play session. It's called You Can Improvise Too with Chip Shelton and Dottie Anita Taylor. Check it out, you will be drawn in. On November 21, we will welcome the Mexican virtuoso El Haley Pimienta, and on December 19, Sonora Slocum, first flutist of the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra, who I had the great pleasure of teaching when she was about 12 years old. All of these events are free to all. Please go to our website for details. Perhaps you will think about the riches that the Flute Club offers to students, teachers, professionals, amateurs, and will consider joining the club if you haven't, enrolling some of your students, friends, or teachers, volunteering your skills and passions, gifting us your older unused flutes for our new loan program, being part of our community. Thank you and enjoy Monsieur Larrier. Hello, my name is Daniel Sharp, General Manager of Powell Flutes. I'm very pleased to present in collaboration with the New York Flute Club, an organization which Powell has had a very long and friendly relationship with, this artist recital by Maxence Lerieu. Powell has always had a kind of French connection, first with Verne's vision to create fine French flutes in the style of Louis Lotte, to today we are part of the international Buffet Crampon group. I'm very pleased that you'll be able to hear this French great master, Maxence Larrieux, and even more so pleased that he chooses to play an 18 karat rose gold Powell flute. I hope you enjoy. Hello, we are very uh, honored to uh, welcome uh, in the Haute Ecole de Musique Vaux Valley Fribourg in Lausanne, Mr. Maxence Larrieux, uh, close to his birthday. Our school um, offers uh, university le level uh, studies for 500 students from uh, 39 uh, countries, like Paulina. Hi, I'm Paulina Tsao, originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I studied with Amy Porter at the University of Michigan School of Music before coming to Europe, and now I study with Monsieur Jose Daniel Castellon here in Lausanne. And we are so happy to be presenting Maxence Larieux, who is the teacher of my teacher, um, for this concert today in Lausanne. Um, and it will soon be his 87th birthday, so it's very special. Thank you, Paulina. Uh, for myself, I'm, I'm so proud and happy to, to welcome you. And I thank you so much, Veronique Caro, for the cembalo, and Va Vanda Albota, for the piano, they, they help us for this uh, fantastic recital, I know. <laughs> Together. <laughs> you are a recital. Okay, good luck.
So I am here today with uh, Maxence Larieux, a wonderful French flutist uh, who was a student of Joseph Rampal in Marseille. Now let me ask you, uh, what kind of flute are you playing on and why did you choose this flute? Can you tell us a little bit about that uh, Powell 18 karat flute that you are going to play for the New York Flute Club recital? Yes. Uh... I think for me, it's the, the best for me because uh, I am very happy with this flute, of course. And uh, it's a new model. And uh, for me, it's very convenient and uh, very, very agreeable because uh, I think it's a uh, egal between the 
bus register or uh, They're very even throughout the register. Yes. Mm -hmm. Flexible. Mm -hmm. Well, right. I thought it was very interesting when Maxence said that he listened a lot to his teacher, Joseph Rampal, about the sound and trying to to imitate because it's such a beautiful sound. Well, that's one thing that I felt when I studied with, with him and I would listen, I would stay after my lesson and listen to other lessons, mainly to hear him demonstrate to other people because the, to hear his sound live being, you know, just a few feet away is just incredible. I'll never forget that. I mean, the sound of the flute, what I learned is that he played with the most natural uh, singing way and, and music also, the phrasing. Always I felt it was the most natural way of playing. And that's one thing that I think I learned from him to try to, to play as naturally as one sings. And of course, the style. I mean, I always admired um, his, his uh, phrasing and ornamentation in Baroque music and, and classical music. I remember you were talking earlier about the recordings of the Bach sonatas with Raphael Puyana. Beautiful. I, I, I remember hearing that recording before I went to study with him. It's just, uh, to this day, uh, it's, it stays with me. Uh, it's beautiful um, playing and, and I'll never forget that. I know it's, it's been some 40 years since I've, I've studied with him, but it, it still uh, stays with me to this day. And, and I certainly learned a lot just from listening to some of these recordings as well. So maybe we can start with you telling us at what time, at what age you started learning the flute, and if you, if Joseph Rampal was your first teacher in Marseille. Yes, I began the flute in nine, nine, mm -hmm. and uh, I, after I have been in Paris with this Gaston Cunel, and uh, uh, I have uh, sixteen, and I, I was. Uh, very, very young, and I get after nine months, I get the first prize. And I was uh, afraid because I have not uh, uh, enough studies and uh, experience about the repertory. Uh, and I, I asked uh, to Rene Leroy to help me. And it was also a very good teacher and very interesting because he, he had uh, many contacts uh, at time uh, with uh, Gabriel Fauré, Debussy, and uh, uh, it was very interesting and very important for me. I, I've been very surprised because at the time we can see the difference between the German school and French school because all the flutist uh, German play absolutely without vibrato. But for me, mm -hmm. I have not a passion about vibrato. I think the more, most important was the expression like the voice, natural voice, like a singer. And uh, also uh, after, uh, I, I have uh, my teacher said, now you have to, to learn and have the experience of orchestra. And then during the winter, I was playing in the Cannes Orchestra uh, three months. And during the summer, it was Vichy. And, and then uh, we, we play many selection of opera and uh, trick. And after when I, I hunt uh, and I take the, the first uh, flutist, uh, it was my, my teacher, Gaston Crunel, and uh, I enter in the opera comic, uh, uh, and uh, I take the place of my teacher in the opera comic, and after it was uh, the, the same orchestra, uh, opera comic and opera. Then, and after, uh, also, we continued to play in the opera and the opera comic, but me, I was uh, also first flutist in opera, and before uh, I have a chance to to play also with the Concert L'Amoureux. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in opera, we have a chance to, to record La Norma with uh, La Calas. Mm -hmm. And also uh, when in, in L'Amoureux, uh, I was recording the old Mozart concerto with uh, Clara Skill. And it was uh, great because it was a great emotion. 
Yeah, I think that the, the Mozart piano concertos are for, for the flute and for all the woodwinds is wonderful, wonderful music. It's one of my favorite things to play. Oh, yes, yes. So you are at your house right now in, in Provence? Uh, yes, it's a family house of my wife. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's very beautiful and now, of course, uh, before long time ago i had uh, many concerts and now very few but uh, i will say that uh, uh, in uh, i have been first time in japan in 1916 60. 60. 1960 yes well, here before rampal <laughs> cool. and uh, after every year japan japan then more than 100 times in Japan for master class and concert. And, uh, uh, and after I begin to, to have the opportunity to go in China, and I was the president for the international competition in, in Guangzhou. And yeah, it's that, true. Now the, the level of playing in Asia is very high in Korea, Japan, China, everywhere. And I think part of it is because the the students can go study uh, abroad, and uh, now the teachers even in Japan have studied in you know some of them have studied in Paris, others have studied in other and places. Then, then it's very important we, we can say that we we have no idea to say it's a German school, American school, or French school. We have it's finished. But in my generation, it was terrible because we everybody can compare. But now it's finished because uh, if the student come from America or Japan or China, they are playing so well because if they have the chance to have a good uh, teacher uh, like uh, Nicole or, or maybe Julius Baker or I don't know. But uh, it's fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the philosophy of Joseph Rampal as a teacher, what you, what you learned from him as a teacher? Well, uh, I think uh, Joseph Rampal uh, was... Uh, we, we have, he had so beautiful sound that uh, it was not... Uh, not uh, for me, uh, he was a great flutist because everybody, all the, the friends, uh, when he, he had been in Paris, said he, he, he must be in Paris, not in Marseille. Uh, all the flutists. Uh, and, uh, but uh, of course, after Philippe Gobert takes the class and it was the best flutist, French flutist. And uh, uh, Rampal had many propositions. Uh, he explained to me that uh, he was playing in a Marseille orchestra and it was not, not so good orchestra, but one time Paul Paré arrived and uh, he had uh, uh, to play Daphne Cicloé, après midi de fun. And when he heard Joseph Rampal, he, he said, oh, please, you have to come in America. He was a uh, conductor in Detroit for mm -hmm. And uh, Paul said, no, me, I stay because here I have a small boat. I'm fishing every morning. And uh, I have my friend, I don't know. <laughs> you know the ambition like uh, Jean-Pierre, of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for me, it was an uh, obsession, I see. I would like to have the sound of my teacher. And all my life, uh, as he explained to me, said, uh, Maxence, when you play, and if you imagine that you have a beautiful sound, you have to think that maybe tomorrow it would be better. I never forgot. Very simple, but he had a natural sound, a beautiful sound. And I was very happy when, when he died. We, we, we have a concert with uh, Jean-Pierre Rampal, Marion, uh, Marius Boeuf, and we play separate and together. And the wife of uh, Jean-Pierre, Françoise, after when we, we play, say, you know, uh, the, the flutist, he, he ressemble. 
who seems like who seems like like uh, Pastor is not Jean Pierre it's you. Hmm. It, it, a, but when we we was in Japan together with uh, Jean Pierre, we are recording for Donon, uh, Carl Philippe Emmanuel uh, Telemann too, and. Uh, when I hear the record, of course, we, we can see that it's the same school. But uh, for example, for Telemann, I play the first flute, he plays the second flute, and for Carl Philippe, he plays the first flute, then it was perfect. And sometimes uh, I say, but uh, it's me or Jean Pierre. <laughs> And can you tell us a little bit your view about sonority, how you approach it when you work on, on sound, either when you practice yourself or when you work with a student on, on sonority? For me, uh, I think uh, probably when you study, it's my idea and also uh, many of it is uh, the same idea. I think uh, at first, when I have something to play or simple octave, I try to play all 40. And when I practice 40, after I play piano, play piano. And I try to make uh, uh, different color with uh, the pianissimo and the fortissimo and uh, try to make after more diminuendo. But at first, I think all the same, same color and forte. And after I decide, of course, to make more contrast and to find more color uh, because I think it's a, the door of security for me. And for the lips too. Mm -hmm. uh, le, for uh, le more sostenuto, I think the best articulation is a two and two. Ta -ta 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 for so sustain more, more and more. This articulation is the best for me. And after for the staccato, I. Try to play to the same note. Like this. And of course, the uh, octave and octave because uh, uh, some flutists forgot that uh, the, the technique of lips is very important. And the finger, of course, but. Uh, the leaves are, and when, for example, when you you don't play a long time, uh, the flute, the, you, you lost, first is a staccato, I don't have it. Then uh, uh, it's probably, probably the double staccato, trip or single, single uh, staccato is very important to, to play every day. And not to stop and say uh, it's okay with a chromatic and uh, uh. Mm -hmm. and what do you I mean I know you've been on the juries of many international competitions what do you notice about the style of playing uh, let's say in the last uh, twenty years the level of playing but also the style and the sound and different differences. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, I was sometimes because I've been uh, many times at first for for Rampal competition before uh, my competition, uh, and uh, with uh, Jean Pierre, we have uh, the opportunity to to say me uh, when I am in the jury, I forgot my sound my style because they are so good players playing absolutely in the style of uh, Galway or, or Nicolet or Rampal that for me I think of course most important is music show but and the style but but uh, when 
uh, I have a good view this playing absolutely uh, in the style of uh, Gold War II. Uh, for me, I don't like, but I respect and I see is the great fruitist, then I, I vote for him. If I don't like, I vote for him because I say, well, it's a different concept and he's a very good fruitist and he can get the surprise. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for your, for your time and we're looking forward to hearing your recital for the Flute Club and I want to thank you for spending this time with us. Well, it's a great pleasure for me, a great honor.